Well, let's get some more on what's driving those US markets. Larry Shover, Chief Investment Officer at SFG Alternatives, joining us live now from the CME Group in Chicago. Larry, always good to see you. Yeah, just in terms of what happened in this session today, uh, was it just a bit of a breather after the, the big rally that we saw yesterday? Or did the retail sales, the disappointment there, have, have a lot to do with this? <sighs> You know, uh, for one, I think Monday's rally caught everybody by surprise, or at least Wall Street by surprise anyway. And today was just more of the same, where there's just a lot of uh, position, sentiment, and, and that is negative, and it continues to be. So we're continuing to see the market just climb this wall of worries on all these reasons on why it should go down, and it refuses to do so. So. 1900 as you mentioned is a big level for traders and for uh, technicians and it seems right now it just the, the pain trade continues to be on the upside and, and just in terms of you know the technical levels i mean the s p 500 going above that 1900 i mean uh, how much uh, you know uh, support do you think there is for the uh, the indices the major indices to move higher from here yeah, well, I think if it holds like it has, like for another day or two, it'd be pretty easy to see the S&P 500 climb up to 1920, 1925 without any catalyst because there's so much money uh, and people on the sidelines. It just wouldn't take much other than some consolidation. To get above 1920, 1925 area, clearly we're going to have... We're going to need to have some very, very good uh, worldwide economic news uh, to reinforce why we need to go higher. Just in terms of um, some of the moves in various sectors, I wanted to ask you about housing because home builders certainly did well overnight. There's talk of uh, yeah. certainly moves to make it easier for Americans to, to get mortgages. Um, how are you reading this sector? I mean, it has certainly been one area housing that's softened lately. Yeah, well, housing, as you know, it's, it's been it's been a really tough space um, after having a pretty much tremendous year last year, and it has consolidated just like the overall stock market. I mean, long term, I think the story in America is very good. I mean, real estate has uh, come back in a big way. However, it's only come down up in a big way on Main Street. I do believe the peripheral neighborhoods and, and pockets of the country will will also uh, do well. It's just it's not going to happen overnight. So long term, I really do like uh, any kind of material or home building stock uh, in the residential space. Any uh, other sectors as well that you're watching? I mean, I, I know just in that consumer space, we saw retail sales there rising by less than expected, but mm -hmm. the March number revised upward. I mean, in, in terms of the you know overall economic growth, what that's doing for the consumer, what are you seeing? Yeah, yeah. I think for me, I think uh, the three-year story from here on out continues to be finance, financials and materials. I mean, I'm scared of the retail sector, how quickly it, it moves. I mean, there are some individual uh, companies I like and like a lot, like Macy's. However, I wouldn't personally invest in it. I'd rather invest in a story that I truly believe in, and, and that's our housing recovery. And, and from that, I like the financial stocks and materials uh, stocks as well that will benefit from the uh, continued residential um, housing move. Um, just in the uh, moves in Treasury markets as opposed to equity markets, I know it's something we've talked yeah. to you about a lot. Um, we saw those 10-year Treasury yields uh, coming down overnight there, um, talk that it was due to the retail sales. Uh, but in terms of the, the level, um, you know, 2.62%, yeah. really, it's still not a big move. No, it's not. And I, I don't really think it had a whole lot to do with retail sales. I think it's more to do with the uh, arbitrage between European 10-year yields and ours. I mean, it's hard to believe, but our borrowing rate is about the same as Ireland's right now and 30 basis points below uh, of, uh, Spain. I mean, it's hard to believe, hard to imagine when you think how high they were in 2010, 2012. Uh, that said, I do think uh, the yield curve in general flattening the way it has. It's caught us by surprise, but um, I think all of it has to do with just the arbitrage in Europe as the periphery is healing. Their yields are going down as well. So, I mean, obviously there's this expectation the ECB next month, it's going to be the month that they are going to move. What, what yeah. do you expect to see from them? 
<laughs> I don't think they're going to do anything that's going to be effective. I mean, unless we get something way out of right field. Um, I mean, I think people are starting to expect some type of QE. I don't see that in the cards. I mean, I think there's going to be some type of zero interest rate pledge, of course, and something else that really will not be effective, although it's enough to serve to calm the markets. Um, and just, uh, just certainly too, then on China as well, because we had plenty of data out yesterday. I mean, what's the the feeling yeah. there about? Um, obviously, there was a lot of optimism about the latest reforms announced late last week. Uh, the commentary about the the new normal of economic growth. What's what's the view there yeah. about China? Yeah. So Sure, sure. I saw that last night with industrial production and retail sales in China underwhelmed just uh, a little bit. I mean, I think people are coming to terms with the fact that China indeed is still growing. However, they're growing from a very high base. So obviously that's just not as appealing as it was probably five years ago, 10 years ago, but they are growing. And right now with this uh, new normal is this something the market has adjusted to and you can see that just in in the way the commodities are trading they're starting to diverge a little bit it all makes a lot of sense so overall investment strategy right now what what's your what's your thoughts well my thoughts i'm still short gold i, I think uh i am still short gold thinking 1200 by year end uh, short term, I'm short copper. I think that was a nice lift we saw last month. I do not think it's going to last uh, long in the stock market overall. Uh, I, I do think we're going to see 2,000 in the S&P 500 by the end of the year. And I continue to be short the euro versus the U.S. dollar.